is Kodak. I see you. Welcome back to the workbench. So, in a video which I've got to release at some stage soon, I built this. Just a little sound device connected up. Switch the switches. I'll oh, put it up here so you can see. Switch these switches on and off. Speaker plays a noise. Now, interesting thing is, noise is generated, I suspect, by this little chip here behind the epoxy. So, I'm not going to be able to figure out what that does or what it is, or etc. etc. But I think it's probably the same card you get inside um, Christmas cards. Same chip you get inside Christmas cards. So, that there is an AND gate. That there's some switches. That's a quad. Was it bilateral switch? But, and these are. Yeah, how you choose the music. Now, what I thought I'd do is I'd reverse engineer how this works to a point. This, I can't figure out what that does exactly, but we'll figure it out. So I've taken some pictures of circuit boards, lined them up. Now this one is one on the reverse, but I've also flipped it so that these pins here exactly match these pins here. So, you know, it's easy to line things up. Now I've got a piece of tracing paper so I can just scroll notes and stuff without messing up paper underneath. So the way I normally deal with these things to start with is let's trace ground. Let's find ground. So that there is source of ground. Comes down here and connects to that pin. So that's ground. Blood fills that one which is irrelevant. Blood fills that one which is irrelevant. So it also comes across here around to these two. So that and that are ground. So yeah, connects to that, connects to that, which also then flood fills all this, which is not connected to anything else. And then also floods all that, which is connected to nothing else. So that's fine. And that, so then it comes up here and connects to the bottom of the capacitor. So that's ground. And then across to, uh, where is it? That one. So that's ground. And that one, where does it connect to? That plane there. So that's ground, that's ground, that's ground. Okay. And then this one comes around to that one, which is ground. Sweet. So it links to this. So what we have here is a whole bunch of ground. So let's just link all that lot together. So that's interesting. That's good. But look, we have a resistor here. So that's a resistor. That's a resistor. That's a resistor. And that's a resistor. So let's just draw in some resistors. And I suspect, uh -huh, look, this one, that one connects to there, that one connects to the middle, that one connects to the middle, and that one connects down here. So that's connected there, that's connected to there, that's connected to there, and up that one. It's connected to there. So, the center of the switch is connected to ground. No, it's not. It's connected to there. Okay. Interesting. So that one's connected to that one. That one's connected to that one, that one's connected to over all that to that one. Okay, so where's that one then connected to? That is connected to that one. Which in turn is connected to the top of the capacitor. That's interesting. That looks like a decoupling cap. Connected to that which is marked positive which that's your positive there we 
which is goes to here, which has a diode on it, which then connects through to there. Okay. So you probably asked me, what is this telling me? Well, what we have here is pull down resistors and a one side of the switch connected to positive. The other side of the switch is connected to nothing. So we have some switches here that will either be pull up or down. Now I suspect these middles are connected to well, probably these pins here, but let's have a look. So D. Uh -huh. Yep, look. That's A, B, C, D. D connects to the middle. So whatever D connects to here, which comes up to here, which then connects to the middle, that is D. So if the switch is switching these two contacts together, it's pulled low through the resistor, so that'll be putting zero volts there. And if it switched to this higher one, it'll be connected directly to positive, so it'll be switching uh, nine volts, I think, when we power this up. High. So there's D. C is connected, so that's C there. So C connects to here, which goes up and connects to C here goes up to there. So C goes to there. That one then connects up to here. So that becomes C here. But it also comes there. Right. Round it up to there. And that one is connected to D. So that basically becomes an OR gate. Because if D's high, so that becomes C or D there. Which is uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, so that's your resistor across there. That's a pull down resistor. Oh, okay. Right. That's C or D with a pull down. So that makes sense. So that one and that one. Uh, C or D. Okay, now B, so that's B there, so that should be A, and it is, right. So A connects through to, that one is A, and A also comes across to that one. Okay, interesting. B connects to nothing on the back. Connects just to there. So where does B connect into here? It doesn't. That doesn't make any sense. Why is B not connected to anything? All right, we'll ignore that in a moment. C is not connected to anything on the top. It's connected. We've done C. So what's this one? Oh, that must be. And D connects to nothing, but it connects to there and up. So we have A, C, D, C or D, but no B. Connects to there, along to there, around to there, to there.
Because ah. that's A. So that trace is A. That trace there is not tracing. It stops there according to that. That doesn't make sense because that would mean one, two, three. One, two, three. That's interesting. So B has nothing. That's about right. I'll have to get my multimeter out and ping that one. But so if we have a look at the 4011 output, that and that are NANDed to there. So let's see D NANDed. Alright, so C goes to there, C goes to there. Oh, hang on a minute. Look at this. C also is those two shorter together. So that's C there. Okay. And according to the pinout, these two link to this. So this becomes not C. And that becomes not C. Okay. So according to this, that should be ground. That's correct. That should be positive. Which it is. So therefore, that one and that one are linked together to there. So that one and that one are nanded to there. So those two to there, those two to there, and those two to there. So this becomes C or D knotted, which then goes all the way up to here. C or D knotted. Weird. So there's your output from your sound chip because that goes to the base of your transistor. That's your ground for the, so those two are linked. So this must connect to, yeah, okay, that's making sense. So there's your transistor there. So this fluctuates, sorry, this here, yeah, this one here fluctuates up and down, driving this up and down, which turns on and off the current through the speaker. So there's your, that's your audio out. That's one of your selection signals. So where does power come into this thing? That. So that's your VCCN. There's your ground, so what do we got here? So that one is not connected anywhere. That one is, that one isn't. That one is connected to there. So pin one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So that one there is connected to that one there. So there's your one, there's your two. That one, oh, okay, that one is connected to there, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's that connected there. And that, which is the 620. Ah, it's beginning to make sense. Look, we have a uh, voltage divide here in a feedlot. Like there's ground, there's one end, there's the other end, and there's the output there. Right, so it's slowly beginning to make more sense. 
And so ignoring all this, this is just, this here is just doing a weird combination to come up with some series of signals, some Boolean signals. These Boolean signals are then fed into this bilateral switch. Bilateral switch? Good bilateral. What is it called? Yeah, quad bilateral switch. And just trying to find the pinout, not the pinout, sorry, the list of what each pin does. Here we go. So that's now here, that there, there's that. That's in of one out. It's B out, B in. So this is your A in and out. So your B in and out, that's your control A, which makes sense. No, it doesn't. Why is a control connected to the input there? Am I getting this right around? A, B, B, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Five is control B. Why is it connecting to there? That one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that there should be one, two, three. That's not ground. Nah, that's what I'm going wrong. Ground is there, not there. Still doesn't invalidate it. That is still a bridge, but it's dividing. Oh, okay, so look, we've got a resistor here, which then connects to here. So ignore that line. So look, we've got a resistor, 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 resistor. So in effect, what we have is with three taps. And the last one is uh, so there, there's the, yeah, that one. Yeah, so basically we can tap voltages off. Oh, whoops, I'm up here. Got three resistors, and we can tap the voltage off each of these depending on the output. So if this goes high, these will have lower voltages. My sus, my current suspicion is that this one here. Uh, which one it will be? That input there, which takes the feed off this resistor here, has, because these voltages will be changing, this voltage here will be, and this one here. Ah, look, that one there is tap off that resistor. That one there, follow it around, is a tap off. The other resistor, and that there, which is 270k, comes to that pin, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the output of B. So it's B out, that's A out, which connects to here, which then connects to the resistor here. Mm. Oh, A out then connects the resistor here. So A out controls that resistor. B out controls the voltage of that resistor. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare to figure out. Because then this one, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's C out. So you've got a resistor three resistors chained with outputs at each of them with this being driven by the voltage divider oh oh this is going to be nasty to try and figure out 
So that there is a control for A, which wraps around to there. It's A controls A. So when that's high, whatever's on A in, which is that pin, appears here, and that's low, that's disconnected. I Z it says. Which means, so what is if it's high Z? What does exactly that mean? If it goes to high Z, If signal in is unknown, if control is low, it goes to high Z. Which means output doesn't go to input. So let's see what does high Z actually come out to as the data sheet. Okay, so when it's high, it just connects. So when it's in, it just connects. Just connects the in and out bits connected, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm just trying to read this data sheet here. So, let me get this table here. So, if the signal in out is high, out in becomes high. If it goes low, it goes high Z. Now, that normally means high impedance, which means if I'm looking at this one here, I think it means it just disconnects those. So in and out are unconnected. So, yeah, absolute max. So, this is what I'm looking at here. So, when that's high, these will flow. These two are connected. In, out. Don't know why it says in, out, and reverse it. In, out. So, 13. Right, these ones are going to be fun to figure out. Let me go back to the workbench. So, what it's saying is this one controls the connection between those two. Those two are controlled by the connection on pin 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That one there controls and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those two. And then that one, which is those two. Okay. Okay, so that is another capacitor. Sorry, another resistor, which then is onto the base of that resistor, which is then feeding out. Right. Okay. This part here is interesting. It's, it's a binary controlled 
array of resistors. So let's move this around so I can try figuring this bit out. Well, I think that's the interesting bit. So what we have is, let's start with A. Uh, let's just line up my circle again. Okay, so negative. So let's start down here. We have so that's your ground. I know it's not ground, it's probably a wrong symbol, but never mind. That connects to which one? That connects. Not there. Okay, so we end up with with negative. Negative is there, which connects to there. Negative drops around to there, which doesn't connect any of them, which drops to there, which is not none of that. Uh, five. Right, so I think what we have is we have. So that's a 62k, and that's connected to that's connected to a n. Interesting. Then that drops down to there. And that's a 270k and that pin there is no that pin there is out that pin there is one two three four six seven That looks like it goes off to the daughter board. And then come over here. So ground is connected. No, ground isn't connected to any of these yet. So that one connects to that one, which connects to that one. That one also connects to uh okay, right. No, I don't know why. It's even more complicated than it looks. Good grief, guys. We've came up with a circuit diagram. So that's a 62k here. 62k connects to both 270k and another 270k. And then one of these then connects to the 620k. So the top of this one is connected to. So that's your input. That's an input. That's A in. This one here. One, two, three, four. So that 270 there has B out. Uh, where are we going? The top of the 270, no, the bottom of the 270 here, that's going to C out. Bottom of the 620 is connected off to our daughter board. The daughter board also gets a connection off there, different pins. Oh, good grief. So 
So if that's, uh, if that's high, that gets a voltage. If that's low, but that's high, that's low, we get the voltage flowing that way. Sorry, current flowing the voltage. Yeah, current flowing that way with the voltage drop, of course. That input will change depending on if that's high or low. Uh, if either of those high, that'll get the same because they're the same resistances. Okay. I think I've figured it out now. Complicated. Yeah. So what we've got is, and it's going to take me a little. What's it? This is thirty minutes. It's going to take more than thirty minutes to figure it out. But these here are Boolean ints, the A, B, C, D. Through a combination of these diodes here, these NAND gates here. We get a Boolean combination appearing on here, on the inputs. Sorry, yeah, on the control lines. Those control lines then select from these resistors here a set of voltages, which are applied to the daughter board on that pin, that pin, that pin, that pin three, four four control signals. Now, that one, that one, and that one, all are going to be variable. So they look like they go through this divider circuit. That one is corrected directly to the NAND chip. So that's your plus or that's plus or minus nine volts. Sorry, plus nine, zero volts. These ones are uh, analog. That's your V, that's your positive. That's your ground. And this one here, with the tracks underneath, connects to the base of the transistor. So this wiggles up and down, driving current through this thing here, which allows this to ch this speaker here to change its pitch. So, and this is just a decoupling cap, from what I can see. But yeah, interesting circuit. A lot more complicated than I think it needs to be because realistically what you've got is you know, three variable voltages controlling which sound this chip here. So this one here is controlled by where's the variable voltage is coming from. Uh, that's one variable voltage. Uh, no, sorry. That goes to your base your transistor. That's an input. That's an input. So those two are variable. That one's a variable input. And that one there is a, I say digital input. That one, that one basically is step. These are, you know, some variable voltage due to a resistor. That's your output. Uh, no, sorry. That's ground. Which means in this one is VCC. Intriguing. Yeah. So that's how the circuit works. I know it's not a complete full diagram. Um, to do that, I've got to try and figure out the logic circuits through this bit, and I'm going to try and trace where B goes. But anyway, guys, hope you found that interesting. Uh, like and subscribe um, on YouTube. I'm on Twitch, where I'm playing Minecraft at the moment, but fair enough. But yeah, like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any comments. If you want to see me figure out the logic of this bit, um, drop us a comment, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Hey guys, quick addendum here. Um, while I was just playing around and looking at the 
diagrams trying to figure out. I noticed there was a 9561 in the uh, actual um, circuit board with K1, K2, and CK on it. So I was just looking, I just did a quick search for 9561. I thought, yeah, why not? And came up with this CK9561. K1, K2. So this is apparently it's a, a little sound generator chip that's quite easily available. Um, and yeah, we weren't too far off actually. Look, you know, there's the output to the um, transistor. And basically what happens is K1, it's got four sounds, but if you change the resistance of RF up here at the top, um, you change the speed of the sound. So you've actually got four tones selected by K1, K2, which, funny enough, we said we had a couple of you know, binary inputs, and resistance across the top changes what's sound and speed and stuff. So if we look back to the workbench, remember this diagram where we had the um, resistance, all this is doing is your switching here is actually just switching what resistance the um, RF is seeing here. So before when I was saying that, uh, oops, get the board up. these here are controlling a combination of um, so C and D, these two here, um, are switching this one here to plus or minus 5 volts, and this one here to plus or minus. So you've got C and D are controlling these two, and then A and B are controlling the RF here at the top. So these contain this decide which sound effect and this got these here control speed but overall yeah and also if you actually have a look if I was a bit more observant I'd notice the 9561 up here which is actually the part number for the daughter board so yeah it's it's quite a nifty circuit you know sound select speed select or the other way around uh, yeah sound select speed select so yeah, that's what you find that interesting. Bit of research, bit of uh, a bit obvious when you look at it. Um, so yeah, and uh, where is it? Um, let's just see if I can get this open. Ooh, it's paint. If I can find it. No, it's not. Hang on a second. Let me change what we're looking at. That one. Here we go. And someone, I found someone has actually broken up the circuit board for me. And yeah, so there's the daughter board. There's the two diodes that we mentioned before. So these two up here. Um, pull down resistors, as we we're saying. Switching them to be pulled down, A, B, C, D, there we go. So, yeah, interesting. We actually managed to reverse engineer this. I probably would have eventually managed to get this diagram out, but hey, I'm lazy, let someone else do it for me. But, yeah, interesting, isn't it? So, there's a the diagram, there's a the circuit diagram. Hope you found that interesting as a quick addendum. Uh, look what happens when you use Google and you notice numbers which don't seem to correspond to any other. I mean, this is a thing. I saw that number there, I saw the number on the top of the board, and it didn't seem to correspond to any part on the board. And it did. So, like and subscribe, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.